Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Storytime with Elgro. And today we have a special treat for you. Um, many of you may not know this, but Elgro, the Lower Grand River Organization of Watersheds, is actually part of another organization called the Grand Valley Metro Council, which is a coalition of local governments that works together on regional issues. And one of the issues that we work on is partnering with the West Michigan Clean Air Coalition on keeping our air clean and helping those of you who are more sensitive to air pollution know when there are um, conditions that might be harmful to your health and, and help you know what to do to try to protect our air and keep it clean and keep yourself healthy. So today we have a special clean water, clean air story time, and we are gonna be reading The Magic School Bus, gets cleaned up. And this is a story about school buses and how the way that you get to school can help have an impact on clean air. Um, and we know at Elgro that clean air is really important to clean water as well. So we hope you enjoy this story and we're gonna be joined now by a special guest. I've always loved Ms. Frizzle. In fact, my stream name is Ms. Riffle. Um, and I have this special guest, thank you, Evelyn. His name is Neville and he's here to read the clean air story with us because he likes likes Liz from the story. So here we are. We'll see what Neville does during the story. He says hello. He says he thinks clean air and clean water are really important too. All right, so the magic school bus gets cleaned up. I hope you enjoy it. Um, and here we go. I hope Neville doesn't eat my earrings while I'm sitting here. The magic school bus gets cleaned up with the help of the US Environmental Protection Agency. Um, the EPA has a cool program where they help fund replacing old diesel school buses with cleaner burning school buses to help protect air quality and keep kids healthy at school. I have to move a little bit so you can see Neville better and so you can see the story better. If we've learned one thing in Ms. Frizzle's class, it's, hold on, I gotta move again. <laughs> it's to be ready for anything. Ms. Frizzle is full of surprises. Today we're starting a new science unit about air pollution. We've learned about some far out things with the phrase, but air pollution sounds like something to get choked up about. Air pollution, substances in the air that cause problems for people and nature. It's that time again, Ms. Frizzle announces. When we see the sparkle in her eyes, we all know we're in for a class trip. We never go on normal field trips, Arnold groans. Yeah, but now we're just studying the air, Tim says. What could be more normal than that, Wanda agrees. Air, it fills our lungs, we feel it as wind. We could be going anywhere because air pollution can get everywhere. When air gets dirty by Dorothy Ann. Air is naturally clean, but pollution can make it dirty. Pollution can be gases or bits of junk that can harm living things. You'll hear more about that later. It's called particulates. We were just leaving the school when Miss Frizzle gasped. I forgot my map, our teacher exclaimed. I'll go get it. Stay on the bus, kids. But when Miss Frizzle left, our bus started to shake. Uh-oh. We felt a jolt and heard a cough. Gasp, hack, wheeze, cough. The magic school bus is sick. Look at all that smoke. Poor bus, poor us. What do you think is gonna happen? Burning more than rubber by Carlos. When fuel burns in an engine, some leftover stuff comes out the tailpipe. This stuff is called exhaust. The exhaust from school buses can be harmful. When a bus is parked while the engine is running, it's called idling. Idling makes us unnecessary exhaust. Oh, Neville. Hey, it's very close to my face. With each cough, the bus got smaller. We got as small as a dust particle and we saw lots of stuff in the air. Yuck, what is that? Wanda asked. That's particulate matter from the buses, Dorothy Ann said. It's usually way too small for us to see, but it pollutes the air and makes it dirty. Pollution bits are so small they can go places they shouldn't, like in our lungs. Look at all those dirty buses. What is particulate matter by Tim? Most school buses use a kind of fuel called diesel. Diesel exhaust contains billions of bits of soot called particulate matter. These bits of soot can be so small that thousands could fit on the dot at the end of this sentence. Because the bits are so small, the wind can carry them for many miles. They're going inside the nose of that. Oh, I was just going to say, what do you guys think this is? But May just said it. Did you hear her? It's the nose. Gross. Even Neville thinks that's gross, don't you, buddy? Oh, no, Phoebe. Uh oh. Ah! <laughs> oh, no, he likes the story. Oh, okay. Ah! 
<laughs> oh no, Phoebe called, pointing out the front window. The wind blew us straight at Mr. Rivera, the crossing guard. Look out! A strong gust of wind blew us right inside Mr. Rivera's nose. Ew, are those nose hairs? Gross. They're not gross, they're good, very good. I wonder why our nose hairs are good. You keep it in, I have someone helping me keep an eye on that lizard so he doesn't attack me. <laughs> Mr. Rivera didn't, <laughs> didn't know we were inside him. The nose hairs <laughs> have you help, <laughs> help filter out big particles from the air so they don't go into your lungs, DA tells us. The bus was so tiny, it slipped right through the hairs. We're headed down the windpipe. Where's your class, Miss Frizzle? The class started its trip without me, Mr. Rivera. I'm meeting them soon. Oops, we're on this page. Kids and pollution by Ralphie. Kids can be at great risk from pollution. Kids' bodies are still growing, so pollution affects them more. Kids also breathe faster, so they take in more air. And we're short, so we're close to the exhaust, especially when you're getting on and off the bus, right? Once we were in the lungs, we could see that Mr. Rivera had breathed in stuff other than air. Smaller particles can go even deeper into the lungs, DA told us. Dorothy Ann always knows, doesn't she? I could use a breath of fresh air. Oh, here's the bus. Mr. Rivera could too. So you see they went in his nose and then down into his lungs. And then this is a close-up of part of his lungs. And there's the bus. You like the story, Neville? The lungs started to exhale and we began to go faster than ever. A high-pitched sound rang through the bus. It's a whistle, Wanda yelled over the noise. Mr. Rivera had blown his whistle and we were shooting straight out into the air. The wind caught our bus and blew it into the sky. Our bus was still sputtering and wheezing. We went higher and higher with each cough. Look, Tim, cost. Tim called, there's Miss Frizzle. She's getting on a bus with Miss Burke's class. The bus needs our help. We need Miss Frizzle's help. Oh, and here's Miss Frizzle. May I ride with you to meet my class, Miss Burke? Look at the two buses. Miss Burke's, sorry, I gotta figure out my, there we go. Miss Burke's bus looks different than Miss Frizzle's bus. Maybe because Miss Frizzle's bus is magic. That's true. Her bus is magic, but I wonder what else is different about Miss Burke's bus. We could see Miss Burke's bus far below. It was leaving the school and turning onto the highway. Follow that bus. Now we can glide down and get Miss Frizzle's attention, DA called. Miss Frizzle's in the bus saying, I hope my class is enjoying its trip without me. Sometimes I wonder if Miss Frizzle sets up this kind of adventure on purpose. I'm pretty sure anybody she else does. wonder about that? Oh, diesels pollute, so why do we use them? By Carlos. People use diesel fueled engines because they do important work, are powerful and efficient, and last a long time. Other things that use diesel include tractors, trains, ships, bulldozers, trucks, dump trucks, buses. Anything that's really big and goes often uses diesel. A different fuel? Question mark by Phoebe. Regular diesel fuels come from underground and we can use them up. Once they're gone, we can't get any more. Biodiesel fuels come from plant or animal sources. We can always make more and they're better for the environment too. So there they go. You can see on here some of the other things that use diesel. We got tractors. There's a giant train. Dump truck, a big train, yeah. A very big train. Another truck. Then the wind blew us right past the Frizz's window in Ms. Burke's bus. She was busy examining her map. She didn't seem to see us. But when she shook her keys, something funny happened to the bus. She's looking at a map of the inside of an engine. I have a bad feeling about this. The wind blew us to the front of Ms. Burke's bus. Where are we going, Keisha asked. According to my research, DA said, as she looked in her book, we're moving with the air in the engine of Ms. Burke's school bus. I've never been that into buses. There's Ms. Burke, there's Ms. Frizzle. We're gonna go inside the magic school bus. We're taking a trip through the bus's engine, DA told us. Right now we're in the engine block, she said, and pointed to a picture in her book. To get out, we need to follow the exhaust to the tailpipe. It's hot in here. That's because of the burning fuel. I knew I should have stayed at home today. He always says that, doesn't he? All right, here we are. A trip through a diesel engine. Fuel, air, going into the engine block. Fuel is burned in the engine block, making exhaust. The exhaust goes through a pipe. The pipe can have things to clean the exhaust. So that's where we're going next. Look at us, cried Wanda. We were covered with bits of soot. 
We've left the engine block. Now we're in the exhaust system, DA explained. Pollution and soot can be left after the fuel burns. We're all covered in particulate matter. Exhaust was everywhere. It was extremely dirty. My mom's never going to believe this. My dad thinks I'm dirty after baseball. What do you think, Neville? Where's Liz? Which bus is Liz in? Um, is he in Ms. Frizzle's bus or is he? I don't know. He's, a, he's in the magic school bus. He's in the magic school I bus? Saw him. How will we find Ms. Frizzle? Phoebe asked. Then we noticed that the exhaust was going into a special device and we were going with it. DA looked in her book. My research shows that this filter traps almost all the particulate matter. It's a particulate matter filter in the exhaust pipe. Here's exhaust from the engine block coming in. Here's unburned fuel, these little chunks. There's gases, there's soot, and there's particulate matter. It's the really, really fine, small stuff. The walls are collecting pollution like a sponge. But we're passing through. Clean exhaust goes to the tailpipe. After we went through the filter, we were all clean again. Then we heard a familiar voice. It was Ms. Frizzle. It's wonderful that you already had a filter put on your bus, Ms. Burke. I'm looking forward to having one put on my bus as well, the Frizz said. We're clean. My mom's never going to believe this. Clean as a Whistle by Phoebe. Old diesel buses can make dirty exhaust. Many of them don't have good filters. Now, new filters can be installed in old buses to reduce 90% of the particulate matter in the exhaust. With the filter, bus exhaust is much less harmful and much safer and healthier for the kids getting on and off the bus and the air for the whole community. Suddenly, we were in an auto shop and we had on mechanics outfits. Ms. Frizzle was there with a the mechanic. Class, this is Mr. Spencer, said Ms. Frizzle. He's gonna put a filter on the bus that will clean the exhaust so the bus won't be sick anymore. We all nodded. After our trip through the engine, we all knew how important Mr. Spencer's work was. The filter is great, but there are other ways to reduce bus pollution. Here's the clean air checklist. Ask your bus driver to turn off the engine when the bus is parked. Keep up with bus like maintenance. He does working. like this story. Look at him. Use cleaner fuels like clean diesel fuel or biodiesel. Line buses up side by side, not front to back at school. Get old buses fitted with exhaust cleaning devices like filters and catalysts. Or replace really old diesel buses with new clean diesel or compressed natural gas buses. Spencer's garage, here we are. We helped Mr. Spencer install the particulate filter. Then we got ready to head back to school. Vroom, vroom, the bus purred to life. We were glad the bus was healthy again. There's no more smoke. The bus is better than ever. Other buses can get better too, but our bus will always be the weirdest bus. It says cleaned up on top. Look at it, see the bus looks different. It's nice and clean now. Good news, starting in 2007, all new diesel school buses have built-in particulate matter filters. And in 2010, there were even more improvements. This is an old book. Oh, but the EPA still has a program to help replace old diesel buses to help protect the health mama, and safety of everybody. The other teacher's bus looked different because it was clean and the and oh. Miss Frizzle's bus wasn't. Yeah, because look. Because when it was clean, it looked like the other teacher. Yeah, and look how dirty it looked before it had the new filter. Good observation, May. A phone call to Spencer's. Ring, ring. Spencer's, the bus mechanic you can trust. Hello, Mr. Spencer, I'm not sure people should trust you. That's ridiculous. But you're in this book that says buses can shrink and fly. Okay, but, and what about saying that kids can pass through a bus filter? We all know that can't really happen, but, and I heard that you wear a wig. Now, just wait a minute, my hair is all natural. It is, and what about the information in this book? That's all for real too. Well, except for the shrinking and flying buses and kids passing through filters. Besides, this is a book about a magic school bus. Huh, I guess you're trustworthy after all. You betcha. The end. I hope that you enjoyed The Magic School Bus Gets Cleaned Up as much as now. Thanks so much for joining us. We hope that you enjoyed our story time, learned a little bit about clean air, and that you continue to follow us for our fun educational activities for the rest of the school year. On Wednesday, we'll be back. Uh, learning about some things you can do in your backyard to learn about how water moves on your own property and how that makes a difference for water quality. So thanks for tuning in. Have a good afternoon.